loyalty. It's the holy grail for marketers, a deeper form of engagement in this age of fractured media and diffused attention. The Pacific Northwest propensity for community building may readily engender this deeper form of relationship. Think RAI, Powell's Books, or even your local farmer's market. We'll speak to two visionaries on how they've successfully built loyalty around their brands. Then we'll consider whether there's something in the water here in the region. Why do we have such strong communities of fans? What are the larger lessons in how we grab someone's attention and create a relationship for life? I'm Hanson Hossein. Welcome to Four Peaks. As executive director of KEXP, Tom Mara stands atop the peak of entertainment. His influential radio station is in many ways ground zero for our region's thick creative currency, as Tom puts it. How did he transform KEXP into listener-powered radio? Tom, welcome. Great to be here. Keep up the good work, Tom. Oh, thank you. So you've got rabid supporters, right, who around the world, not only do they listen to the station, that they financially support it as well. So what does loyalty mean to you? Uh, you know, we were talking earlier about loyalty being the holy grail for um, organizations. I think for nonprofits, I think the holy grail is, is trust. And I think that's, um, if that is not present, uh, I think you're going to find yourself having twice as much work to do. Uh, so as we think about strategy, as we think about vision, trust has to be an organic part of the organization. Why is that so important, trust because, itself? Because that's what compels people to really connect and become even heavier users of your organization. So nonprofits should not assume that that trusted relationship is there from the outset if just because they're a earn nonprofit. It. You've, you've got to earn it. And it's one thing to sort of cast yourself out there, but once you have connections with people, if you're not able to engender trust quickly enough, um, you're going to have you're going to have a lot of issues because our business model hangs on the extent to which entirely we engender loyalty driven by that trust. That's our business model. Uh, we're asking people to support us with their contributions for something they don't have to support. They can listen all day long without whether they support us or not. I find that really interesting because especially in the kind of communication that we look at in the program that I run. We feel that trust is actually on the decline because people don't know where to turn to anymore. The institutions are in decline, so you know we're hearing voices that they haven't normally heard from before. In your career, as you've seen trust to be this incredibly important bond in sustaining the business model, is, have yeah. you seen have you seen trust itself change its nature or its degree change in, in how you've been able to sort of sat, harness it? I, I think it can live in in new sort of new ways. I think in uh, through the new ways people can engage with our organization, how we can engage with with them. So back in the day, single transmitter, you turned on the radio station, you listened. And if you trusted our DJs to select the music for your day or for your life, um, you know, that's, that's where the, that connection is, is made. I think the way KXP looks at the world, you know, you think a radio station only worries about its listeners. Yeah. But it seems to me that you actually have two sets of constituents here. You've got listeners, but you seem to take your artists also very seriously. So when you look at trust, does trust differ in terms of artist versus listener in terms of how you uh, foster that relationship? The trust has to permeate throughout because not only is there trust between the listener and KXP, there also needs to be trust between the listeners of KEXP for even more engagement to occur, for even more usage to occur. And there needs to be trust between KXP and the artist uh, because we're asking them to do something that's a little unusual. They're at, we're asking them can we record your music? Because you and do actually, a lot of that at KXP, right? That's right. We do about 500 sessions a year with artists. And we ask them to give us the recording that we just made of your music and to distribute it at no charge to, uh, to others. So there needs to be trust there. So they want to make sure you're not exploiting them financially Precisely. and they're missing out on that. Once so we started that, then the 
House of Cards falls. Right. So what are you doing then? What is the actual action that you need to undertake to build that trust, whether it's with listeners or artists? Well, I think it starts with um, your mission, understanding what your mission is. Uh, KXP's mission is to enrich people's lives. We're in the make lives better business, to enrich people's lives by championing music and discovery. And then uh, identify what the vision ought to be. And for us right now, we're spending a lot of time talking about vision because we're planning a move to Seattle Center. And we need, uh, and we're really refining the vision for how that new building at Seattle Center is going to uh, generate impact and also engender this trust that we're, that we're talking so about. So that means the physical space is going to change and you still want to see yourself as a very community-centric institution. So you have to think about even how you maintain that openness even as you're looking at this new New, new location, right? That's right. So the impact that we generate comes through engagement. You've got to spend time with us. You, you need to visit us. You need to connect with other artists. There's just all kinds of different engagement, discovery-based engagement, learning-based engagement, sharing-based engagement, trust-building engagement. Uh, and if that is not there, then folks are not going to spend much more time with you. They're not going to stick around. And because of that, they lose on the benefit of learning about music that they really should at least try on for size. So trust gets them, uh, you know, once they come to us, trust enables us to generate impact in their life. So this sounds so really great in theory, and it sounds like you're executing on it pretty well. How is it going so far? You are, you say you're listener-powered. Is it uh, the success that you hoped it to be based on this? Um, I think once you understand your mission and understand the, the value of trust in the organization, um, then it's about the people that you bring uh, together. Um, and we, you know, spend a lot of time not only, you know, finding DJs who are knowledgeable about the music, who are also passionate about the music, but also uh, want to put themselves in a role of responsibility of engendering trust with listeners and, and enabling listeners to discover what we uh, produce. So there is inherent trust. Uh, it could be easy for me as the executive director to walk around with a clipboard and tell our morning host, John Richards, what he's going to play tomorrow. But I'm not doing that. What I'm doing instead is I'm relying on John to select the music himself. In other words, the, the trust and the authority to select the music is actually extended all the way out to the 35, 40 DJs that we have. That's another example of trust. That sounds incredible. I mean, it sounds like an amazing place to work if you're a DJ who is there to because you love the music and you love what you do. Uh, when we're speaking about loyalty, how, it seems to me that you've built incredible loyalty with your employees even. I, I think that is, um, is, is critical. Um, I need to trust our staff, our DJs, to play this role in other people's lives. They need to trust me in terms of you know, leadership, uh, the decisions I'm making. Again, if that's not there, boy, you're going to have a lot of, a lot of issues in, as an organization. And when it comes to loyalty, you've actually been there from the beginning. I mean, you were uh, a volunteer for this radio station before it even became KEXP when it was a, a University of Washington-based radio station. Mm -hmm. And now, even as the executive director, where you're paid a salary to do what you do, I noticed on your signature, I got an email soliciting funds from you today uh, on your mailing list, um, that you are a platinum member, which means that you actually donate money to the organization that you work for. What does that, what does that tell you? Because, about? well, I, uh, it's a, it's a, that, that thing is a personal thing. I, I don't mind talking about it, but again, it's, it's similar to our listeners who um, really kind of understand and appreciate the, the work that we do in their lives. I, it's the same thing for me. I mean, I'm, I'm just closer to it, but at the same time, I see a whole bunch of people doing amazing work in terms of music discovery, and that's something for me that I uh, believe in. Um, so let's look on the other side of the spectrum then. When, when you do these pledge drives, it sounds like you're almost 100% powered by your listeners, right? It's based entirely on pledges. Well, it is based all, all on contributions, and the contributions come from primarily listeners, individuals, and but, also from the, from, but also from corporate sponsors. What do you hear from the listeners when, they're, when you're doing these pledge drives, uh, when they're calling in? Is it, I mean, sometimes, especially on, on other nonprofit uh, media organizations, I think it's kind of an ordeal when you're listening to it, but it seems to me that your DJs are having fun when they're doing it. What are you hearing from your listeners? Say, oh, God, not again? Or are they actually saying, well, I'm so happy to be contributing to this station that well, I care uh, so much about? Well, I think in all honesty, in my view, I think there's two people in the world, those who like pledge drives and those who don't, both inside and outside of the organization. There are actually people who actually like pledge drives. We do. We believe it or not. Um, 
we do take a different approach to uh, the on-air campaigns. We, we try to be very kind of irreverent, passionate, um, and we get people calling because of, you know, some of the antics, some of the irreverency that we display on the air. Uh, but, you know, the number one question we get from our listeners um, is, what is it that you just played? Because our, our format is wide and deep. There's no playlist at KXP. Again, we're trusting the DJs to select from a million songs in our collection. Uh, and we, uh, you know, need to, you know, satisfy that need for discovery. And when you're talking about online media, that's where it can get very fun and also very complicated. Because you so guys have actually been online for a long time. You've been streaming for a while. The playlists are available. You were there before a lot of other radio stations were. Uh, we were an early streamer. I wouldn't say a pioneering streamer, but with our partnership collaboration with the University of Washington, we did pioneer some technologies. I think we're the first station to provide an uncompressed stream. Uh, I think we're the first station to provide a service to the cell phone, things like that, through that collaboration with the university. Um, so, but when you're talking about a discovery-based mission, when you're a radio station 20 years ago, very easy, good people, make sure you put the needle on the right song and, and call it a day. But nowadays, there's blogging, and there are, you know, podcasts, and there are live video streams, and there are exchanges between people, members of the audience, you have no clue is, is, going, is going on. You mentioned this whole idea of a playlist that's wide and deep. I mean, you contrast that. I mean, I was once loyal to radio stations. I think people used to be loyal to radio stations. But you see things like Clear Channel, where they, you know, they basically hollowed out the stations, where their DJs aren't even there anymore. It's programmed by one sort of central office somewhere thousands of miles away. Uh, is loyalty still possible with the medium itself? I mean, how are you different from how are you different from Clear Channel, for example? Well, I've got to say um, that it's easier now to sort of differentiate uh, KXP's you know value in a person's life you know now than it, than it was let's say 20 years ago before. I think radio has gone through some transformational change, a lot more efficient modes of distributing music, fewer DJs, you know. It, it, uh, et cetera. Is that DJ really important for that loyal connection? Well, I, you, we hear it every day. We hear it every day. We hear from our listeners saying, you know. Thank you for not only playing the music I like, but, and this is one of the comments I just love, you know, I don't like everything you play, John, but I love the fact that you're playing it for me. Uh, because, again, you're actually letting somebody into your life to create the soundtrack for your life. Again, there's that trust. But that's really interesting because this is uh, uh, in stark contradiction to what we think is happening to media and that it's we have such ability now to pick and choose because it's all available to us through like Spotify for example mm -hmm. that we can entirely personalize what we want based on our our desires and you guys are kind of a little bit of old school here you're actually introducing people through this wonderful serendipity but it's a bit more top-down it's the DJs who are making these choices how do you endure or even justify your existence in the Spotify era well I, I think there, there's a different nature between the two, I think with Spotify and Pandora, you're really um, relying on, uh, you know, a, a system to select music for you. Uh, with KXP, you're relying on a human being to actually select that music that you're that you're uh, that you're listening to. I think that's a distinction, and because there's a human being every second of the day, through every you know second of the year, there's a human being selecting that music on the air. Um, that makes a big difference. You begin to either not like or like that host. And so you that bring that person into your life and you trust them to, again, select the music that you think you need to discover. So that human connection, that authentic connection is really what keeps KXP sort of legitimate in I like to say that, the, 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 that we, don't, you know, we don't program music, we curate music, and the curating DJ is the center of the universe. And by the way, this is not a new notion. This is the way radio, as you were kind of saying earlier before, the way it used to be. Right? Back in the 70s, you trust that DJ to, to play the music in your life. <laughs> it seems to me that you really do uh, see KXP at the center of the community, that it has to be very community-centric as an approach. It has to be totally community-focused. It has to be totally constituency-focused. In other words, our constituents are, are music lovers, people who are curious about music, and musicians. Those are primar our primary constituents. Uh, How do you balance that with the be... business needs, though? You're still raising money from these people as well, right? You're still asking them for money even as you're providing that Precisely. service. Precisely. Because the strategy that we build for every year for, uh, for our, our budgets, that support our budgets, have to connect to how we're generating impact in the lives of our listeners and how we're generating impact in the lives of artists and how we're connecting those two together. That's the sort of primary strategy to our um, 
to our sort of way of life at KXP. Well, I think it's a really interesting strategy, and I think that connection is where we're going to leave it right now, and we're going to come back and talk about that a bit more. So you've heard from Sean Akazi from the peak of community and Tom Mara at the Summit of Entertainment. When we return, we'll bridge these peaks. What's the secret sauce for making friends for life?